Southgate has brought England very close to glory over the last three tournaments and now at the Euros this summer they're favourites to win it and with Bellingham, Rice, Foden, Saka and Kane Southgate has some serious firepower but with issues in the defence and midfield what do England have to do to finally win it? I think everyone really believes that you know, this is our time, this is an amazing opportunity for us to do something special. This is the best England squad we've ever had. One of the best generations of England players. If we win a major tournament, there'll be uh, some serious celebration. We're definitely good enough to win it. We're probably favourites to win it. The problem is Southgate. England booed as Iceland claimed shock win at Wembley. How fit is Luke Shaw? When can he play? Who is the ideal partner for John Stones? Can the blame's going to go? Gareth Southgate. Yeah. But rightfully so. He won't continue as manager if England don't win. If we didn't win it, I'd be quite shocked if I'm being honest. I think it's out of us and France. Are England actually going to win the Euros? Is this their year? Welcome back to Offside Insights. I'm Monty. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at this exciting England team to see what stands in their way of potentially winning their first Euros. Southgate has gone with a bold young squad, dropping some big stars in favour of young players on form. The age profile of the squad is good, with many players in their peak years. It's the most valuable national team squad in world football, and according to Opta's supercomputer, they're the favourites to win the Euros, with the bookies also predicting their win with 3-1 to one odds. They've got a favourable run to the final, with a winnable group and round of 16 before potentially Italy, France and then Spain. They did look poor against Iceland, but it was a tame friendly without all their star players. Southgate is likely to line up in a 4-2-3-1 formation with a defensive double pivot, attacking fullbacks and a free number 10 role for Jude Bellingham. Here you can see the formation in play against Ukraine, with Luke Shaw often pushing high from left back. In possession they move to a 3-2-5, with Walker staying deep to form a back three and Shaw and Saka holding the width in attack. And then in possession they'll drop into a compact 4-4-2 with the wingers protecting the fullbacks and a defensive double pivot in midfield. We know that um, Southgate likes to play two holders really. I mean he always has, I, I suspect he won't change. I think he's got this view that to, to be a really great and entertaining team doesn't necessarily win you a tournament, you need to be pragmatic. I think the game's moved on a little bit as we've seen with, with Pep's teams and, and, and Klopp, how dynamic they are. The more progressive approach would be a 4-3-3 with Rice in the single pivot. This would require more conservative fullbacks that invert and don't hold the width in attack. It would allow England to have more attacking talent on the pitch with two attacking midfielders that can bomb forward while the wingers hold the width. But this might be too aggressive for tournament football. Once you get to the knockouts, the team with the most clean sheets often wins it, so perhaps Southgate's pragmatic approach is the best option. And with this year as being his fourth tournament in charge, it's likely his last chance to bring it home and become an English football legend. Southgate's most trusted and experienced defence over the years has been Pickford, Shaw, Maguire, Stones and Walker. Pickford is guaranteed to start in goal and has had a great season for Everton, saving 5.7 xG's worth of shots and keeping 13 clean sheets, the second most in the division. Stones is back from injury and will certainly play at centre back as he looks to replicate his fine performance against France where he didn't miss a single pass. And Kyle Walker might have lost a yard of pace but he's still one of the best right backs in the world. The big problem for England's defence Defense is Harry Maguire's injury. Harry Maguire, actually, he's probably one that everyone's been digging him out, but he would have started and you would have wanted him in the side. He's going to be a big miss at set pieces as well, for and against. Out of Esri Konsa, Mark Gahey, Joe Gomez and Lewis Dunk. Who is the ideal partner for John Stones? Mark Gahey, the 23-year-old Palace centre-back, is the most likely partner, but he lacks experience and height at 5'11", and the two times he's played together with John Stones, they lost 4-0 to Hungary and 1-0 to Iceland. Eric Konsa is also an Option after a great season with Villa and Lewis Dunk has likely been brought as backup. The other defensive problem for England is Luke Shaw coming back from injury. Bear in mind he hasn't played any football for Manchester United since the middle of February. At the moment we think he could have some involvement in the second group game and I think that's a risk worth taking. He's England's only attacking left back and he was very influential in the World Cup with the joint most chances created. Trippier will likely fill in while he recovers but has limitations as he's right footed. Gomez can also play left back but offers very little in attack. England will employ some pressing from the front, but compared to the Premier League, it'll be on par with Nottingham Forest and Sheffield United. Over Southgate's three tournaments in charge, England have only conceded 12 goals in 19 games, and they'll be looking to maintain that defensive solidity as they go into this Euros. The main man in attacking midfield for England 
will be the 20-year-old Jude Bellingham. He lit up La Liga this season with 23 goals and 13 assists, and his all-round stats are incredible, with his only weakness in defensive duels. Jude Bellingham, I mean... Oh, my word. I mean... What a season. He's still very, very, very young. I think a lot of people feel that it's the kind of player that someone that actually has got so much about him that he can drag you through to line, because sometimes you to win something, somebody's got to make it happen. And protecting the defence behind him will be Arsenal's Declan Rice, who has had another incredible season, winning tackles and interceptions right across the pitch. But the big question is who will play alongside him? Are we short though, a little bit in, in defensive midfield? Southgate has typically chosen Phillips, but he's no longer in the squad. The most likely option is Trent. He hasn't played much as a pure midfielder, but does invert centrally from right back for Liverpool. He's certainly got an incredible passing range and experience winning big tournaments. Or could Chelsea's Conor Gallagher be the perfect box-to-box -box midfielder to partner Rice? Southgate's also brought the young duo of Kobe Mainu and Adam Wharton although they're probably too inexperienced to play at this Euros. England have got some serious players in attack, with six of them hitting 20 goals or more last season, by far the most of the Euros this summer. Kane is the superstar up front, and with 63 goals, he's England's all-time leading goalscorer. He's had an excellent debut campaign with Bayern Munich, scoring 44 goals, the most in Europe this season. He'll likely have Foden and Saka either side of him, which could be one of the most dangerous attacks in the tournament. Saka's had another great season as a touchline winger for Arsenal, and Foden has had a big impact on City's dominance again this season. With five subs available for the first time at the Euros, England have got some serious players they can bring off the bench, including Ollie Watkins who had a fine season, scoring 27 goals and creating 45 big chances. Cole Palmer could have a big say after his 27 goals for Chelsea this season. Eze finished the season strong and could bring something special from the bench, creating huge amounts of chances from the left half space. And the way he goes past players, he just glides past players, you know, he looks like the X Factor. Tony is also available with his incredible penalties and Bowen is also there after a fine season for West Ham. But some big names like Sterling, Rashford and Grealish have been left out and perhaps their star quality might be missed in important moments when England are chasing a goal. And if it does come home, Grealish will certainly be missed in the celebrations. England are just favourites, but France, Germany, Spain and Portugal are strong contenders. France have obviously got an insane amount of quality, and with Saliba, Griezmann, Camavinga and Mbappe, it will certainly be hard to stop them. But the experience they've got, players who've won the World Cup, yeah. being in the final, I, I just think France will just, just have enough. The home nation Germany also have a strong chance of winning it, and with Neuer, Rudiger, Gundogan, Kroos, Havertz and the young duo of Musiala and Wurz, they've got some serious firepower. It'll be Kroos's last tournament, and he'll be looking to dominate the midfield like he did for Real Madrid in the Champions League this season. Portugal have also got a strong squad with Silva, Fernandes, Rafa Leal, Felix and Ronaldo. They've won the most amount of points in qualifying and Martinez is certainly a good manager. It'll likely be Ronaldo's last tournament and he'll be looking to replicate his incredible form in the Saudi Pro League this season. 35 goals, 11 assists and 6 pre-assists. Wow. Lastly, Spain will also be dangerous with their incredible quality in midfield. They've got Ramos, Rodri, Pedri, Gavi, Isco and the youngest player in the tournament, Yamal. Rodri is the best defensive midfielder in the world and will certainly protect that defence for Spain. England's group is certainly winnable, but there are definitely some threats in there. Denmark are the strongest team, with Christian Eriksen pulling the strings and Rasmus Hoyland up front. Serbia are also very dangerous, with Lahovic and Mitrovic up front. And then Slovenia have got one of the best goalies with Jan Oblak and a young rising star in Benjamin Sesko up front. This Euros is probably Southgate's last chance at glory and England need to stay solid at the back and let their attack show their star quality. Southgate has done a lot for English football and if he were to win it, he'd be knighted and become an English football legend forever. But I also think it's time for our football to modernise and I'd love to see Eddie Howe bring his progressive tactics. But ultimately, only one in 25 teams win it. Knockout football is very unpredictable and it'll most likely end in disappointment but winning it could set the country on fire like nothing else and hopefully there'll be lots of great memories as the country unites around the beautiful game. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Who should partner Stones? Who should play with Rice? And who do you think will win it? And do you reckon there'll be any underdogs? I'm shouting out Ukraine. I reckon they'll do pretty well. If you enjoyed this, please consider checking out one of my other videos. My last video on Arsenal and their defence. And then one of my earlier videos on why penalties should be harder.